Hi folks, Harry Frank from Red Giant here. In this tutorial, I'd like to show you a new plugin called Typographic from Red Giant Universe. Typographic is an all-purpose titling and shape generation tool perfect for lower thirds, full screen titles, title overlays, that kind of thing. I'd like to jump to a blank video clip here and apply typographic. So I can go to my effects, look under video effects, RG Universe text section, and drop a typographic on here. You can think of typographic as a very all-purpose go-to plugin for doing very quick and easy titles. We have two lines of text, which are contained in these sections, text one and text two. And we also have two separate shape generators, shape one and shape two. These can be a number of procedural shapes that are drawn right within the plugin, such as rectangles, circles, polygons. And there's also a shape library. And there's a bunch of really useful shapes in here, such as banners, icons, uh, watercolor, and uh, paint. I'll come back to that, but let's just set this back to its default setting of rectangle, and I'll uncheck link dimensions and set this back to 400. What I'd like to focus on here at the more at the beginning of the tutorial is the animation section. This is the section that is going to need the most explaining. Everything else in here is pretty straightforward stuff. You don't need me to tell you what a text color or a text opacity or a text offset is. These are all very straightforward and we'll go through and do some examples and kind of touch on all of these. But what I really want to focus on is this animation section. Now, up here at the top, we've got position. And I want you to think of this position as the home position of everything. When we animate, this is the point at which everything is relative to. If I twirl open this animation section, these are global controls for all the different sections. We can turn on or off the parameters that we would want to animate. So if we simply want to disable animation along the X position, I can uncheck that and now nothing will animate along the X. By default, they're all turned on. They're just there if you'd like to quickly turn them off and disable animation for that parameter. And each of these sections, text one, text two, shape one and shape two, and even this section here called source, which allows you to display the source image and use that as sort of a source that you can animate. But I'm not going to use that as an example right now. I'd like to just focus on the text and the shapes. So each of these sections has their own animation values. All of these percentages here refer to how much that parameter is animating from and returning to its normal state. So if I say start the position x 30% in the positive direction, this is going to move the text 30% of the total comp width. Percentage has to be a percentage of something. So position is the total comp width. Scale is relative to its original scale. Tracking is pretty straightforward. That's just animating its overall tracking back to its default state. And rotation, rotation is generally expressed as an angle. But here, we just wanted to keep everything consistent because otherwise we just end up with one parameter that is a totally different parameter type than the rest of the animation values. So just to show an example, let's say instead of having my text animate from the left and right, let's say we wanted text one to come from the top and text two to come from the bottom into place. I'll quickly uncheck the animate position X. That way I know nothing is going to be animating along the X axis. Now I can go to the position Y and set this to negative 25. So this is going to animate from a quarter of the way up, a quarter comp height and move into place. And maybe it's confusing to have this set to 30. So I'll just zero that out. It won't do anything because animation in the position X is turned off, but I'll just zero that out as well. So text one will animate 25% from one direction and text two will animate 25% from the other direction. So positive value of 20. And again, I'll zero this one out just so that we're all clear. So now when I hit play, text one moves from the top and text two moves from the bottom. Now because I've turned off position X animation, my shapes aren't actually doing anything. So let's have them kind of twist in. We'll have them do a little bit of a rotation. So let's go to shape one, shape one animation values. 
and I'll go to the rotation and I'll set this to positive 25 and in shape two and it's easy to tell which is which there's a little easy checkbox here to turn that off so that's just a rounded rectangle uh, outline without a fill and I can have this rotate in as well so I'll go to the shape two animation values and set this to negative 25. So what we'll end up with is the two shapes kind of twisting in, doing a rotation in contrary motion. It might be moving a little bit quick. So if I go to the animation section, we have a duration right here. This defaults to a half second. And I think maybe one full second is going to be useful here. There we go. You'll notice it's animating in and then animating out. It's doing this because we have an intro animation checkbox and an outro animation checkbox. If I wanted it just to sit there and not animate out, I could uncheck that. If I wanted it to animate a little bit later, I could go in here and set this to a different value. So I set this to six, and now this will animate at the six second mark relative to this clip. Now you notice the text is moving as one complete line. If I set this to characters, this will animate in by character. Now, the last thing that probably needs a little bit of explanation is this delay behavior. Now, this is referring to the delay that we have on each section. So shapes one and two, I don't think have any delay on them. Yep, so those are both set to zero. But I can go into text one, go to the text one animation delay, and I'll turn this up just to make this a little bit more pronounced. So if I set this to 0.6 and I set text two to have a full second delay, and I'm gonna actually set these back to lines. So that's just animating by line. So what we've got here is the shapes animate in. So we have shapes, text one, text two. This delay behavior allows us to tell the animation engine to either keep the animation the same, so in other words, the last in is going to be the last out. So again, as it animates out, it's shapes, text one, text two. But in the case like this, it can sometimes look a little bit weird if you're using delays and the shapes go away, but the text is still kind of sitting there kind of left hanging. So an option was made to mirror the timing. So now the last in is going to be the first out. So it's shapes, text one, text two. And then for the outro, text two, text one, and then the shapes animate out. Next, I'd like to just dive into a practical example and build this lower third title right here. And in doing this, we'll touch all parts of the text and shape generators, the custom layer, and just kind of get into fine tuning and using this as a design tool. So I'll make a copy of this clip and put a little further down the timeline and remove typographic entirely. So we'll build this one from scratch. So I'll go into my universe text category and apply universe typographic. And I think it's a good idea to start with the copy that you're going to have in there because the amount of copy, the actual size of it is greatly going to kind of drive the design and how to work with that space. So I'll go in and edit this text by going to the effect controls and clicking on edit text. Now you're free to use whatever font you have installed on your system. But also, I want to note that included with the installation of Typographic, there are 56 open source fonts that were installed. Now, the reason for this is that when designing presets that we ship with this, we're limited to the few fonts that actually overlap between macOS and Windows, which is a very underwhelming set of fonts, such as Arial and Times New Roman. Which fonts are included and what those fonts look like is included with the documentation for Typographic on the Red Giant website. So I suggest you take a look if you're curious. But there's a large number of serif, sans serif, monospace fonts, that kind of thing. I'll do a little bit of adjustment of the color here and click OK and get back to our timeline here. I'm actually going to turn off the shapes for now. I don't want to worry about those. Let's just focus on the type. 
So I'll go into shape one, shape two, just turn those off. And let's get the type positioned here. I could either scrub the values right here by clicking and holding and dragging it, or I can go to the locator right here and drag this down to where I need it. If I want to go in here and make my text bigger, I can do that. Let's say we'll set this to 72. And I'll make this text two a little bit bigger as well. Let's go down here, text two, and turn you up to, let's say, 48. Okay, so let's add some animation to this. I'll go to the animation section, and I'll set this to words instead of lines. So now this will fly in by word. I'll set this to a little bit longer. Let's go to the duration and set this to one. And I'll set the intro start to a little bit later. So we get a couple seconds of video playing and then we'll have it go out at let's say eight seconds. So now this should sit, should give us two seconds of video and then our text is gonna start flying in. Now let's add some shapes to this. Before I jump into shapes one and two, there's a nice little feature in here that gives you a little bit of flexibility. In each text section, there's something called the background. This is kind of a bonus shape. This is a box that you can draw that takes on the position and animation of the text as well. But I can independently scale this text box, color it, draw a stroke around it, that kind of thing. So there's a fill stroke. There's even a dash control for the stroke. So I'll turn that off and I'll just leave this as a solid box behind this text. It gives it a nice solid weight behind it. I'll make it just a little bit smaller. Okay, so now I'll jump into the shapes. I'll go into shape one, click enable for that. And let's make this kind of a red color. So I'll go into my shape color and dial in a nice red. I'll give it a little bit of semi-transparency. So I'll go in here to shape one opacity, maybe dial this down to 80%. I'll turn it at an angle. So I'll set this to 45 degrees and I'll fine tune the height and width to kind of get that look that I'm going for. I'll move this shape one offset so it's over just a little bit, kind of keep fine tuning this. Maybe I'll dial this down just a little bit more, 70%. Okay, so now in shape two, I'm gonna use a custom shape. So if I go in here, shape two, click on this. Now there's a couple different custom options you've got. If you've got something that you wanna throw in your timeline and pull up as a custom shape, you can do that right here using your custom layer. And then in your custom settings right here, you would define what that layer is. Or you can use the included shape library. And if I go into this same shape two custom settings, and this is set to shape library. If I click on this, choose a shape, we'll see a bunch of stuff in here, including some paint strokes and watercolors and stuff like that that are quite useful. So I'll use this one right here, paint four. You can also manually set your selection right here. I'll change the color right here. So I'll go in here and dial this into a blue. And we need this to be a bit bigger because it's kind of obscured by that text background. So I'll go to the height here and turn this up and turn this up as well. Now it's a little bit obscured. And the reason for this is that by default, as you can see, as I make this bigger, shape one actually draws in front of shape two. So it's shape one on top, shape two on the bottom. If you want to flip this around, you can simply go to the shape one settings and Right here, shape one sorting, set this to behind, and now shape two is in front. I'll fine tune this color just a little bit. Uh, I haven't really tweaked the animation of the shape, so let's see what that's doing. Looks like it's just fading in. So I'll have this red shape kind of move in from the left. So that is shape one. So I'll go to shape one animation settings, move this in a negative position along the X, and I can see that it's moving already, so I don't need to double check that the animation is turned on for that. So that flies in. And let's say I set shape two to animate from the bottom. 
and I'll go in here and set this to a positive value. So shape two should move from down below and up into place. There it goes. In fact, I don't think this needs to be one full second. We, I think we can make this a pretty quick move here. Once you've completed your design, you can go up here and save this as a preset. On the Mac OS, your presets will save in your local folder under your documents in a folder called Red Giant Universe Presets. And you'll see it right there. If you send this to anybody else running Universe, such as somebody on Resolve or Final Cut or Avid Media Composer, they will be able to load this same preset and it will look exactly the same, assuming that you've used fonts that are either installed on both systems or you've used the open source fonts that we've included. I think that about covers everything that needs explaining with typographic. I think everything is pretty straightforward and there's always the documentation to back up anything you might not understand. A good place to start is to go to choose a preset and start with something right here that might be similar to what you're trying to do, such as a lower third. There's lots of useful presets in here to get you started. So that is Universe Typographic. My name is Harry Frank. Thank you so much for watching.